I spin up a lot of demo and development WordPress sites for all sorts of things. And I realize there are a lot of people who don't know or have never touched WPCLI. In my opinion, this is one of the most powerful and underrated tools in my WordPress toolbox, and it saves me countless hours each month. In this video, I'm going to introduce you to WPCLI and share a basic WordPress setup that I use on nearly every development and demo site that I make. If you use a blueprint site that you clone and keep updated, this might be worth a look. So what is WPCLI and what can you do with it? Just as the name suggests, it's a command line interface to configure WordPress that runs straight from your web server's terminal. Nearly every professional grade web server that I've run across has WPCLI installed. And if they don't, you probably want to take a hard look at them and what other things you might be missing out on. You can do so much with WPCLI that there's no way I could even touch on all the possibilities in this video without it turning into an hours long slog. So instead, I'll just point you to wp-cli.org where you can find links to the reference of commands and the handbook. I use WPCLI to configure my WordPress installation, add themes and plugins, change options, run updates, manage the object cache, manage cron schedules, perform find and replace operations in the database, manage roles, and do a bunch of other things that I can't think of off the top of my head. And since all this is done on the command line, you can either run commands manually or create shell scripts to automate them. For this demo, I'm going to use local WP since it's straightforward and cross-platform. I've already installed a demo site, but I haven't done anything with it yet. To get us started, I'm just going to click on the open site shell link in local WP. If you were doing this on your web server, you'd need to SSH into the server, change to the website's user account, and navigate to the WordPress installation directory. I have no idea why, and I'm too lazy to troubleshoot, but local WP throws up a bunch of warnings when I use it on a site running PHP 8.1.23, so I'll just switch to version 8.2 so you don't have to see all that garbage each time I run a command. The first thing that I'm going to do is to run wp version to make sure that everything's working properly. There it is. Running wp version returns the version of WPCLI that I'm running and it confirms that it's working. Now let's take a look at the things that we're going to configure here. We could go wild with this like I have in my production script, but this is a good place to start and it gives you an introduction to what you can accomplish. Also, I'll post a link in this video's description where you can download a copy of the text file. Keep in mind that this is not a shell script. This is just a file for me to use in the video so you don't have to watch me make a bajillion typos. You can take this file and turn it into a bash script pretty easily though. We'll start by using WPCLI to add the lines in wp-config that disable automatic updater. To call WPCLI, we always start with WP followed by the command. In this example, we use wp-config and then we set the parameter automatic updater disabled. We set that to true and then we do core upgrade skip new bundled and set that to true. If you look on the WPCLI commands website, you'll see a list of all the different commands, and then you just click in to find out how to use them. So for example, here's WP config, and we can find out all the subcommands to use. Then, and this next command's a bit tricky, we take that site URL and change it to HTTPS if it isn't already. The reason this one's tricky is because we're doing a lot more than just using WPCLI. We first start off by using WP option to get the site URL option from WordPress. Then we use the Unix command sed to find and replace HTTP colon with HTTPS colon. Then we use the output from that sed command to pass that back to another WPCLI command that says WP option update site URL. Then we do the same thing for the home option. I use the WP option commands a lot, so this one's definitely worth looking at. We can do all sorts of stuff like adding options, deleting options, getting them, putting them back in. You can do it with uh, regular options and you can even do it with serialized options. Next, I'm just using the WP theme command to delete some pre-installed themes. This will leave the 2024 theme installed and activated. This one's really straightforward. We just start off by saying WP theme and then delete and then the names of the themes. If we wanted to install a new theme, we could use the WP theme command again. And this time we would say WP theme install, and then we'd follow that with activate to activate it. I'll set my time zone to New York, which is my local time zone. And I change the start of the week to zero, which is Sunday. These aren't necessary. They're just something that I do. Here again, we're using the WP option command to set the time zone and the start of the week. Next, I search for and delete the default hello world posts and sample page. Then I create new pages for home and my default article archives. I also rename the default category from uncategorized to general since that's a bit more friendly looking. This one again is a little bit tricky because we're doing more than just a raw WPCLI command. 
Here what we're doing is we're using the WP post command and then we're telling it to delete, but we need to find the post that we want to delete. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna use a WP post list to find the post that we're looking for. So we're gonna use WP post list. We're gonna look for uh, the post type of post and the name is going to be hello world. And then we want to return the ID of that, not the name of it. So once it's returned that ID, it then calls the WP post delete of that ID and we tell it to force it. Let's take a look at that on the WP CLI reference page. We've got the WP post and then all the stuff we can do with it right down here. If we look at WP post delete, it wants the ID of the post to delete and then you can tell it to skip the trash bin if you want. Like I said though, we need to get that ID. So first we call that WP post list and here's all the parameters for it. So again, we're just listing out that post to find the ID and then we're telling it to delete that ID. We do the same thing for the page sample page. Next, we're gonna use WP post create. We're gonna tell it what type of post to create. We're gonna tell it to publish that and we're gonna give it a title. If we wanted to, we could also give it a slug, but since these are just one word posts, I don't need to worry about that. And lastly, we're using WP term to update the category of ID one, and we're gonna change the name and the slug to general. In the reading settings options, I'll set my site to use the home page for the front page and the articles page for my article archives. I also tell it to only use post excerpts in the RSS feeds, and I set the site to discourage search engine from indexing it. Here again, we're using WP option update to set the option. And then just like we did when we deleted the pages, we're gonna call WP post list to find the ID that we want to use. And then we're gonna use WP option update to set that. So we do that here for the page on front and then the post page. And then again, we're back to regular old generic WP option update to set the uh, RSS to use excerpts and to set the blog to not public. The last thing we're going to do is kill a bunch of stuff in the discussion settings. I tell WordPress not to send or receive pingbacks and trackbacks, and I disable the ability for people to submit comments on new posts. While I'm here, I also set the options to force commenters to register, for comments to be held for moderation, and to disable showing commenter avatars. Yes, I've already disabled comments for new posts, but I'm a belt and suspenders kind of guy, and these settings aren't gonna hurt anybody. The discussion options are all pretty easy. We just use WP option update and set the options. Here's a handy little trick for you. If you ever need to find an option, you can quickly see them all by going to your wp-admin forward slash options.php URL. This is a whole lot easier than using WP CLI or looking through your database tables to find the setting that you want. Before I wrap this up, let's take a look at one more set of commands that I use on my development and demo sites. You may have seen videos where I mentioned using test data in my site, and that all comes from the WordPress theme test data file. And here is how I load all that in a matter of seconds. If we were doing this by hand, we'd have to install the WordPress importer plugin, download the test data XML file from GitHub, run the importer with the right settings, then remove the importer plugin. Here, I've automated all that with a few small WP CLI commands. Installing and activating the WP importer is pretty similar to what we did with the themes, except this time we're gonna use WP plugin. And we're gonna say install WordPress importer and then activate. This next command is not WP CLI, it's just curl. And all that is is downloading the XML file. Now we're gonna use WP import to import that XML file that we downloaded. And we're gonna tell it to create the authors. Once it's finished importing, then we're gonna remove the XML file that we downloaded. And then we're gonna use WP plugin deactivate to uninstall our WordPress importer. Changing the front page and post is exactly like we did before. All we need to do is find the ID and then tell it to update the options. And again, deleting the old ones is the same as it was before as well. We find the ID and we tell it to delete them. Pretty cool, huh? I hope this gave you a little insight into what WP CLI is and how you might be able to use it as part of your own workflow. Yes, most of what I showed today can be done by cloning a starter or blueprint site, but there's a lot more to WP CLI than that. It's worth checking out the command reference on wp-cli.org to check if there's anything there that might help save you some time and effort. As always, if you found this video helpful, please like and subscribe or leave a comment below. I'd love to hear about some of the ways that you're using WP CLI or answer any questions that you might have. Thanks again, and I'll see you next time.